Hello. Uh, picking up where we left off, and by we I mean I, um, and discussing this idea of a, uh, a gestural envelope, and I uh, like trying to uh, limit the number of sides of an envelope to four at a maximum, three if you can. Um, that's that's a, a fun conversation once again, but uh, a little um, art supply side note. My pencil is getting pretty short. I'm using this pencil extender. It's by Derwent. I like them. They come in a regular pencil size that holds a regular pencil. This is a bigger one that will hold a bigger pencil bigger around. Um, so, side note over. I want to get back to, um, now that I sort of have an idea of how I would simplify that shape into three sides. And by the way, all the, I'm making all these marks nice and dark so you can see, but um, all of this is going to be marks you're going to be sketching so light that um, you'll be able to, that they, that they won't get in, in your way. So if I was going to do this um, with four sides, I would, um, I would think about it and, and imagine, would it make the most sense if I did one, two, three, four? Would it make more sense if I went one, two, three, four. Um, it, once again, it comes back to sort of a, how you feel about whatever you happen to be drawing. And um, I'm gonna go with that. Oh, and we are going to be, um, I should have said this earlier. We're going to be relating this to the, uh, the little, little sailboat um, image as well as this Charlie Harper. I'm going to start doing it with this Charlie Harper uh, illustration. This is one of those things that's deceptively uh, difficult um, sort of thing to draw. But back to um, our four-sided adding a side if we need to. Um, for example, this I wouldn't need to if I was going to start off with an overall gestural envelope. Three sides is plenty for that one. Three sides would be plenty for this one. I'll get to you later. <laughs> but there certainly um, are times when, uh, well, there's times when you're going to want more than even four, but um, tr the, one of the reasons I like trying to keep it to four is sort of once again my trying to get quick, relatively quick and relatively close um, estimates of, of what I'm drawing. Hmm, where are my knees in the way? But uh, so for this kind of shape, I would, um, a four-sided um, gestural envelope would be something more along the lines of this. Now you might ask, why, why am I um, bulging outward here when the shape, the original shape is more like that? Excuse me. Why wouldn't a gestural um, mark be more like follow that curve? You certainly can. I'm trying to, um, that reads simpler to me. 
And one of the, the things that we're going to try, that we're trying to get to is creating this four-sided envelope, which will allow us to get sort of a gestural idea of what the diagonals of that gestural might be. For a three-sided triangle, um, really all I'm worried about is the angles of the three sides. And if I get those fairly accurate, it'll take care of itself. As soon as I add that fourth side, that makes things a little bit more tricky. But I can, um, I can help I can help get more accurate by also imagining, um, I'll call them diagonals, even though I know that's not diagonal, uh, X and X. Um, for example, over on this one right here, if, um, If I am starting to, uh, if I'm drawing this and getting, starting to get an idea of overall what this shape is like, um, it'll be helpful to um, create something sort of like this. And why that's helpful is that um, it will really start help um, helping this shape get more of a, a true sense of of what angle it is, what where there's sort of implied points. I might you know think about things a little bit more down here, but. Um, And it will also just help me with overall proportion. Once I get, once I can do this crisscross, that is going to help a ton with um, checking my proportions. Hopefully, we have either talked about or I'll, I'll talk about it more, but. Um, The notion of uh, creating a four-sided object, three of um, the first three that you start off with sort of, well, depending, this is a bigger subject, but um, sort of don't matter as long as the angles are somewhat correct. It's the fourth one that really kind of matters where you place it. and. It, um, that's when these diagonals will come in handy. So I know that um, here is where this this line will start. It's uh, and I can check it with with this. It's all related to um, the bounding box idea and. I'm adding an additional diagonal. And if I want to uh, create that, this is a fancy four-sided thing. This is a very uniform, but the same idea applies to, to this. The, the, the first three sides I draw are, um, as long as they're following the angles correctly, those are all fine, but I don't really know how far this fourth one is up this way or far, far down this way. And this diagonal is what tells me that.
Hey, that's pretty close. Good job. Um, so how I would um, start applying this to drawing. I'm going to start with this. I may um, end up doing the dog on, on another video. But one thing I want to do is just for the <clears throat> excuse me for the sailboat start start getting down some of the things that we've been talking about. First, I'm going to do my top right. Ooh, I think that's the farthest left. Those points. I'm going to sketch, sketch in the box just, and what this is really just helping me get an overall idea. I, I don't think I've worked on this one on, in a video, but I do. This is a cool one in that um, it might be easy to imagine that this this bottom line of the uh, the main boat part hull I don't know um, is horizontal, but it's not, and that's one of those things you'll find with uh, by doing this. You know, I will say this extender makes that this whole thing a little bit trickier. So when, after I've done that, and um, I'm going to sketch in real quick just sort of some ideas of where um, some bisecting lines might be. I would probably also begin to um, get a, more of a sense of what this thing feels like in a gestural envelope. And this isn't so much.